In today's video, we are going to go over three different example problems using buoyancy, Archimedes principle, and for this video, we are going to focus on floating objects. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and to support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell, give it a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is, of course, in the description below. And let's go. We are going to do three different problems, problems involving floating objects. In the first video, we are going to go with a cube of aluminum that is floating on mercury. So there is our cube of aluminum is floating on mercury. Mercury is a metal, but at room temperature, mercury is a liquid. And we want to know what fraction of the cube of mercury, excuse me, which fraction of the cube of aluminum will be beneath the surface of that mercury. So we are going to be using Archimedes principle and we need to have the densities of these two objects. The aluminum has a density of 2,710 kilograms per meter cube. We're going to be going with kilograms and meter cube, the base units for density, not um, grams and centimeters cubed, and the density for the mercury is 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, we know that that object, the aluminum, that cube, has a weight. The weight points straight down, and that is what we have here for Fg. That is the weight of that object right there. Now, the reason the object is not sinking into the mercury is because there's a buoyant force and the buoyant force points straight up. The buoyant force comes from the aluminum and that cube is sitting right there at that surface. So therefore, we know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight force. Now, we can also say that the buoyant force is equal to the weight and the weight we calculate as the mass of the aluminum times g. That's the weight of the aluminum from Newton's second law. And on this side, we have the buoyant force. The buoyant force comes from the mercury. So for the buoyant force, we use the equation, the density times g times v. And because the buoyant force comes from the mercury, we have to use the density, the mercury times g times the volume. Now, the object is floating. So therefore, it's the volume of the object that is beneath the surface of the aluminum. That's what it says here, BEM. And that's for beneath because it's floating. And that is equal to the volume that is displaced by the aluminum cube, the volume of mercury, and also equal to the volume of the aluminum cube that is beneath the surface. Okay. On the right-hand side here, we have the weight, which we have M times G. We don't know the mass, but we know the densities. And we have our density equation, which the density is the mass divided by the volume. But I rearranged the equation here to solve for the mass of aluminum. So that means the mass of the aluminum is going to be equal to the density of the aluminum times the total volume because we're finding the weight. And I can substitute this term into this equation right here. And then I can place that down here so that I get on the right-hand side that the weight is therefore going to be equal to the mass, excuse me, the density of the aluminum times the total volume of the cube times G. Okay, so now, because we have G on both sides, we can solve for this two ratios. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cancel the Gs. We have a G on both sides. And I'm going to set two ratios up that are equal to each other. And I'm going to do that by first dividing both sides by the total volume. That will move the total volume over. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the density of the mercury. That will move this over to the other side. And I end up with two ratios that are equal. One is the ratio of the volume that's beneath the surface to the total volume. And this is really the percentage of the cube that is going to be beneath the surface of the mercury because this is the part divided by the whole. You do that and you get the, de uh, the decimal value and then you can get the percentage from that. That is going to be equal to, because I divided both sides by the density of the mercury, that is going to be equal to the density of the aluminum divided by the density of the mercury. So now, we have the density of the aluminum and the density of the mercury, which has been given up here. And we can just simply divide those two values, 2710 by 13,600, and that comes to 0.19, which then I rounded that to 20%. 
That means that 20% of that aluminum cube is going to be beneath the surface of the mercury. And you can see we found that out really just by dividing the density of the object, the aluminum cube, divided by the density of the liquid that it was floating on like that. Okay, so that is example number one. For example number two, we're going to have a sphere of uniform material that has a diameter of 12 centimeters. It has a mass of 750 grams. And we want to know, will that sphere float on water? And if so, what fraction of the sphere will be beneath the surface of the water? So we're going to have the sphere. It's float. It's in water. We don't know if it's going to float or not. The density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter or 1,000 kilograms per, per meter cubed. Now, in this problem, we've been given the values as centimeters and grams, so I'm going to use the density with the units of grams and centimeter cubed and not kilograms and meter cubed. All right? So, we have our density equation, and we are first going to have to find the volume. Okay, the volume of that sphere. And this is the equation for the volume. The volume equation is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, this is the diameter, so we have to take half of that, and we get that the volume is therefore going to be equal to 4 thirds pi 6 cubed. The volume, therefore, of that sphere is 905 centimeters cubed. We were given the mass. And now we can find the density, and the density is 0 0.83 grams per centimeter cubed. Now it's in water, and you should know that if the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid that it's in, then it is going to float. So that sphere is going to float. When it floats, once again, there's still going to be a gravitational force there's going to be a buoyant force, so we can use the same method we did in the previous example to find what percentage of that sphere will be beneath the surface. And you remember, all we did was we took the density of the object. In the previous example, it was the aluminum cube. And we divided that by the density of the liquid. In this case, it's water. Last time, it was mercury. But you should notice that if you take this value divided by this value, you get 0.83. And that means that 83% of that sphere is going to be beneath the surface of the water. Now, let's just do that and show you that mathematically. This is the density of the sphere. This is the density of the water. 0.83 divided by 1. And you get that 0.83. Because the units cancel, you multiply that times 100, and you get 83%. Okay, so that's how you can figure that out. And simply what we did was we took the density of the object and divided it by the density of the liquid, and you get 0.83 or 83%. That is example number two. Now, for example number three, we have a wooden raft, okay, that you might see at a swimming place, swimming hole somewhere at a lake, and you can see we have the dimensions here are 4 meters by 3.5 meters. That's like the length and the width. And then the height of the raft is 0.4 meters. And we want to know, will the raft float? Now, it is wood, so we know it's probably going to float. And we're going to show you why. And if so, how much the raft will be below the surface of the water. The density of the wood is going to be 420 kilograms Per cubic meter. Now, we're kind of saying that this is a solid piece of wood. Now, normally when you have a raft, it's not solid, but in this case, we're taking and assuming that this raft is made of a solid piece of wood, and this is the density of that wood. Now, if the raft is going to float, then the weight, which this is the equation for the weight, has to be less than the buoyant force. This is the equation for the weight. This is the equation for the buoyant force. So let's just calculate the weight. Now, we don't have the mass, but we do have the density and the volume. So we're going to once again solve this equation for the mass, substitute that in here, and we get that the weight is going to be equal to the density of the wood 
times the total volume of the raft times g. Now, for the volume, we gave you the density. For the volume, we simply multiply these three values. This is the volume, g is 9.81, and you get that the weight of that object, the weight of that raft is 23,000 newtons. Now, we're going to calculate the buoyant force, and hopefully it'll be more than this, because we know that wood floats, wood is generally less dense than water, so it better float. And so we're going to have here the buoyant force. Now, the buoyant force comes from the water. So this buoyant force, we have water here, uh, we, is going to be the buoyant force from the water. So we use the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times 9.81. And then the buoyant force would be the total force we're calculating if this object, this raft, was beneath the surface. And when it's beneath the surface, this is the volume that would be displaced, the volume of that object. So we calculate that, and we get that just about 55,000 newtons. Now, when the object is underwater, because the buoyant force is more than the gravitational force, the weight, then the object is going to float up to the surface until those two forces once again become equal to each other, because then the object will not be fully submerged underwater. So it's going to float. It's going to float because the weight of the object is less than the buoyant force. Now, for part B, we want to know how much of the object is going to be beneath the surface of the water. So we have here that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced by the object. When an object floats, the amount of water, or the amount of the fluid that it displaces is equal to the weight of the object. That means that the weight of the water is going to be mg, is going to be equal to the weight of the water, which we calculate as mg, is going to be equal to 23,000. Now, from our density equation once again, we can take the mass and we can substitute in the density times the volume because that's how when we solve the density equation for the mass, it's the density times the volume. So now we can solve this equation because we're going to take the volume and we're going to break that into the length, the width, and the height. And we want to solve for the height. And when we solve for the height in this case, okay, this is going to be the height of the object that is beneath the surface of the water, okay? Because this is the buoyant force when the object is floating, not when it's fully underwater. Okay, so we can break this apart like this, and we get that H, the height, is equal to 23,000. We solve for H. We divide, uh, multi, uh, divide the equation by all the other terms, and we get H is equal to 23,000 divided by the density of the water, times the length of the raft, times the width of the raft, times g, and we get that that is going to be 23,000 divided by 1,000. On the previous slide, I told you that the length and the width were 4 meters and 3.5 meters times g, and therefore you get that the height, and that's the height of the raft that is below the surface. That's the amount of the raft that is below the surface of the water. Okay, so there you go. We did three very nice examples using Archimedes' principle and buoyant force for floating objects. I hope you found that video to be helpful. If you did, please don't forget to do all of the following things. Please support our channel. Subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Please leave us a nice positive comment. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.